Hello and welcome to Styx, the first cross-platform stick figure animation tool. This is an intro to the public beta of the Mac version of Styx, which was just released. Keep in mind as I go through this introduction that as a beta there are a few known bugs we'll encounter as we go, which will be fixed for the official 1.0 release. I'll let you know when we get to some of them. What you're seeing here is the working environment of Styx. As you can see, several palettes opened automatically. Styx will remember what palettes you had open and where they were located during your last session and will restore them when you launch Styx the next time. For now, I'm going to close all the palettes and focus on the main window. We'll get an overview of the palettes a little later in this video. Additionally, you see we have a Styx document window that opened with the default stick figure displayed. To help you get oriented, let's go over the terminology for different parts of the Styx environment. This is a stick figure, which in Styx is just called a figure. A figure is made up of two different components. The round handles that you can use to manipulate the figure, which are called nodes, and the lines or circles that join the nodes together, which are just called lines. Figures reside on the stage, or the active working area of the current document window. In Styx 1.0, the stage and the window are the same, but in later versions of Styx there may be times when the stage and the window are different, but we'll be using the word stage for this video. The figure that is shown is called the default figure, and is displayed any time you create a new document window. Note that you can change the default figure in the preferences window, but we'll leave that for later. As you can see, the nodes of the figure on the stage are all red, with the exception of one node, which is yellow. Red indicates that the figure is selected. If I click somewhere else on the stage, the red nodes turn to blue and indicate that the figure is not selected. Nodes that are red or blue are called pivot nodes because they let you pivot or turn the lines that they are attached to. It's important to keep in mind that for any given line there's a starting point and an ending point. In sticks, there are nodes drawn at both of these points called the start node and the end node. But when you click on a node to pivot it, you're always clicking on the end node of the line in the figure, and the pivot happens around the start node. In sticks, a line that pivots when you drag the end node is a line that is attached to a node. The yellow node is called the drag node because it lets you drag the figure around the stage. You can optionally drag a figure around by clicking on a line and dragging. If you've used Pivot Stick Figure Animator on Windows, this may not be what you're used to, but don't worry, if you don't like this ability, you can turn it off in Preferences, but we found it very useful. Sticks lets you add figures to the stage in four different ways. You can copy and paste an existing figure on the stage, add a predefined figure built into the Sticks application, add one from the library, which is a user configurable set of saved figures, or you can use your mouse to draw one on an empty area of the stage. The first way is copy and paste. Simply click on a figure and copy and paste. Of course you can use the command keys. The new figure is placed on top of the original and you can just drag the new one to a different location if you wish. The second way is selecting a predefined figure from the figure menu. As you can see, you can select a single node, a single line, a square, or a Styx figure. Selecting from this menu will add that kind of figure to the center of the stage. I will add a single line right now so you can see what I mean. The third way is to add one from the library. But the library is empty when you install Styx, so we'll have to add a figure to the library in order to demonstrate this. To add a figure to the library, you can either click on a figure and choose Add to Library from the Figure menu, or you can right-click on a line, not on a node, and choose Add to Library from the menu that is displayed. I'm going to name this entry my figure and click OK, and that has now been added to the library. Of course, we're not displaying the library yet, so let me show you the library palette. 
As you can see, there's an entry called My Figure in the Library. If you click on an item in the library, a preview is shown above. To add a copy of the library entry to the stage, you can double-click on an entry in the list, or you can click and drag from the preview onto the stage. As you noticed, this is one of the known bugs in the Styx public beta. When you drag a figure from the library, you get the animation of the drag being rejected. However, in actuality, the drag is successful. This, of course, will be fixed in version 1.0 of the Styx application when it's officially released. The last way to create a figure is to right-click and drag, or control-click if you don't have a two-button mouse, on an empty area of the stage. That will create a line right away. By the way, this is also one of the ways to quickly and easily add lines to a figure, any figure, simply by right-clicking on a node and dragging to extend a line. In this manner, you can just simply draw your figure on the stage to make it look exactly as you like. Now that you know how to make lines from scratch and how to manipulate them, I'll show you how you can use this knowledge when you're creating your figures. First, I'm going to draw a simple sailboat. Note that I had to draw the middle node at the top here in order for me to be able to extend a line from the node in order to be able to attach it to the figure. Now what would have happened if I had forgotten to put that middle node in? Well, I'll show you. First we'll draw the bottom of the sailboat, and then we'll draw the mast. Now you notice what happens. I went to go right click on the line, and of course since there's no node there, I get uh, the pop-up menu for the figure. So how can I fix this? Do I have to delete the uh, figure and start over again? No, of course not. Styx allows you to add and delete nodes by holding down the Option key and clicking on a line. If you Option click on a line, you create a node. If you Option click on a node, you delete the node. So what we're going to do is we're going to Option click on a node here and add our sail. Now, as you can see, this is a pretty crude and uneven sailboat. Suppose we want to fix this. If I click and drag on a node, it's going to pivot. But Styx lets you manipulate your nodes by adding two additional modes that you can use. One is called Extend Mode, and the other is Distort Mode. Extend Mode occurs when you hold down the Command key and drag a node. Instead of causing the attached line to pivot, it instead extends the line that the node is attached to and lets you stretch it out. Distort mode happens when you hold down both the command and option keys and drag a node. In this case, you're only moving the node itself, and the lines on either side of it stay attached and adjust like rubber bands. So by using these two modes, I'm going to fix my sailboat so that it looks better from a visual standpoint. Now, if you think you might forget the keys to hold down, whether they're Option or Command or Option and Command, Styx has a nice little hints window, which you can get to in the Help menu that will show you what keys to hold down in order to manipulate the nodes. As you can see, it says Option click on a line to add a node, Option click on a node to delete a node, Pivoting a node is just by dragging, Extending is Command and dragging, and Distort is Command Option dragging. This uh, Hints window can be left up. You can drag it to another location, or you can close it by clicking on the Close box here. I'm going to leave it open so you can refer to it during the rest of the video.